This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we've got car answers. So we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we're going to have some tips of the week, open phones and texts, of course, and to service or not to service your transmission and this is something interesting. Engine or transmissions fail four to one over engines, and that's partially a made-up statistic by me. But how, how often are people replacing engines, and how often transmissions? It happens way more that you're at a transmission shop getting a transmission than an engine. And we all take care of our engines. We get them serviced every three thousand, every five thousand miles. We get an oil change, but we never do anything with that stinking transmission. And that's the thing you're going to end up buying because you didn't take care of it. And there is so much bad information about transmission service and how to take care of them. And Matt, I mean, you talk to 10 different shops. There's <laughs> transmission service means 10 different things to 10 different shops. Well, auto repair is very subjective. I mean, it's just one of those things. Everybody has a different opinion now on how something goes. Someone might say, rebuild my transmission. And that means a whole lot of different things to maybe three or four different people. Some guy might rebuild that transmission with as little as parts as possible, only replace the things that are worn out. But maybe there's a wear item that's not worn out. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. But, you know, it's hot today. We had a record yesterday. It's hotter than heck today. And what's the number one killer of transmissions? Heat kills transmissions. And the fluid breaks down. Does it really kill the transmission? Or it kills the fluid, and then the fluid doesn't work well? I mean, is that I would how say that works? Both. I think when it- you heat up mechanical parts, I think it just changes tolerances a lot. And your fluid is really taxed. And the fluid breaks down. It starts to oxidize with the heat. But I'm just going to solve. I mean, there's all kinds of myths about transmission service. But probably the, if I'm just going to pick the number one myth that that I hear every day is my transmission is sealed and it doesn't need service. That's the number one myth. And it's kind of like a unicorn. I've never seen a sealed transmission. <laughs> I've been looking, but I still haven't seen one. Matt, why the heck do people say the transmission's sealed? And I think the number one reason is they took the dipstick away. So there's no dipstick because the manufacturers, A, save money on the dipstick, and B, they don't want the common consumer looking at transmission fluid. But how does that now become the sealed transmission? Well, I think it's like a lot of things. I think the, those rumors or myths are born of people with obviously with misinformation or the inability to do the job. We hear people talk about, oh, the check engine lights. Oh, the shop just said ignore it. It's no big deal. Well, I, I interpret that as we don't know what to do, so we're just going to kick the can down the road. So the notion that you go to the to maybe the general repair shop or maybe the quick drive through lane or the mass merchandiser, it's they say it's sealed because it has a dipstick, but really what they mean to say is we're not qualified to work on this. Nor do we, we want to. We probably we could be qualified, but it's not convenient for us. I mean, it takes yeah. up too much time in a bay. Yeah, it, well, exactly. They're, they're there to push things through. So that's what I think that is. It's code language for we don't know what to do or we don't want to. And a lot of these service ideas, the flush, I mean, we talked about service before the show. What does service mean? It's like kind of something to say, I'll take a hamburger. I mean, you can get a you can get a 49-cent cheeseburger. I want bacon you, you, on my hamburger. Yeah, you can get deluxe. You can get, uh, you know, Durant's has a heck of a hamburger. But but the the point is it means a lot of different things to, to everybody. Well, and it's not – there's so many – when Tri-City started in 1972, they had a little leaflet with the 10 models of transmission on them. It, mm-hmm. was, it was pretty simple. They all took the same fluid, and, and it was, I think it was from whale's oil is where it came from back <laughs> right? in that day. But, but it's now, the book for how many models of transmission is like a phone book. I mean, you can't even keep track of them, and they're not, you know, one's a CVT, one's a dual-clutch transmission, where it's actually a, it's a manual transmission with electric motors in it, and then you've got another one that's a six-speed, you've got one that's a nine-speed. They're all different. They all use different fluids, and for a lot of shops to keep track of all that, they don't want to do it. 
Yeah. And so I think that's part of where that comes from. I mean, it's hard for me to even keep track of all of them. Well, yeah, they don't want to do it. It doesn't fit the business model of quick service. And, and that's how some of these things, like the transmission flush was born. I mean, the traditional service, you want to pull the pan down, inspect the filter, make sure it's not leaking, put a new filter, new gasket, excuse me, bolt it all back up. Well, the, the quick loop shops can't do that. So they develop these other methods to allow them to do fast, high profit service that they can turn real quick. But really, is, is it really a service or is it a disservice to your transmission? Are you well, getting value out of it? That's what I want to know. A bad transmission service, in my mind, is, is worse than no service at all. So you're better not to service it in comparison to a bad transmission service. But a good transmission service, heck yes, you want to take care of it. We were just talking about transmissions fail four to one over engines. We take care of our engine, but we completely neglect. These things are expensive. I mean, a BMW transmission, the modern one, may be $7,500. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And the service isn't cheap. On a BMW, you may spend 500 bucks for a service, but in lieu of $7,500, that's, that's not a bad investment. Well, and I think the other problem that we see is the manufacturers, again, are into this these extended drain intervals, they're marketing a low cost of ownership, and, and, and it's the marketing department is really not in tune with the reality department. We say that all the time. The, the fluid's only so good, you still have dissolved solids in there, you, you know, the, the fine particles that make it through the filter, the filter can only do so much. And yeah, the fluid might be okay, but it's all this stuff that's, you know, like the gook, the little stuff, the microscopic stuff that's in there that's wearing out the transmission too. The biggest thing that we see fail on a regular basis is valve bodies and solenoids and transmissions. Those fail all the time. But what happens, the reason those fail is they get gummed up. They get gummed up with just natural debris that occurs inside the transmission. And those solenoids are like little magnets. So if there's any, anything floating around that's magnetic, it goes right to the solenoid. And it sticks there. The solenoid starts sticking. The other thing it does is it's, it's great for buffing out those valves and wearing them out. Fresh fluid is a, is a must, and so the point that I want everyone to take away from this, your transmission does not have lifetime fill. It's not sealed for life, and it's just, I mean, we talk about ZF. ZF makes transmissions for Ford. They make transmissions for BMW, for Volkswagen. They're almost across all the manufacturers, and they say you got to service a transmission, but then they put that transmission in. We're going to pick on BMW and BMW, and it says right on the sticker on the pan it says "filled for life." Yeah, yeah. Right so, underneath. but those two disagree. But we want to sell a car that looks low cost of ownership because we're just going to multiply the services in the manual versus what they cost. And, and, and if we don't put anything in there, it looks like it doesn't cost anything. Well, in the case of ZF, or if you're Canadian ZF, they, uh, <laughs> they you know. Th there's we have a bulletin from them where they've sent out and they say hey no what these manufacturers are telling you is not true that's our transmission they may have made up something different or lost something in the translation but i've shared it with you dave maybe i even got it from you is it's, uh, that transmission that they call lifetime is 62,000 miles is when they want that service or what is the lifetime what do you service it when it blows up hey it's dead let's All service right, it's it now get a new transmission well, throw well, it out too late it's <clears> kind of like you know a late for a blood transfusion when you've already kicked the bucket. Well, I think people are wondering, how often should I service my transmission? And <clears throat> do I need it? We've talked about, do you need it? Yes, you do. But how often is that? And I would say as a minimum, just a minimum, it should be done every 50,000 miles. Minimum. I, I would say across, across the brands, manual transmissions tend to be a little bit different. They don't run the same. They don't operate the same. They're more of an oil. It's not generally, there's not a pump in there. But automatic transmissions, I would say 50,000 miles, bare minimum. Now, on the more aggressive side of things... Well, let's, let's, kind of, let me time you out for a second. So 50,000 miles, they need a service. But what is a service? What is that? What does that mean? Whatever you want it to be. Okay. I know at the car wash, they stick a straw down the dipstick, and they vacuum out like three or four quarts, and then they straw in three or four more quarts. So that's, that's what they call a service. That's different. <clears throat> we do probably 10 to 15 transmission services a week and 52 weeks a year. In a service in most cars that have a pan and a filter, we, move, we go and drive the car first because we want to make sure the transmission's working good before we service it, well, as it should. Will a service fix a problem? Um, <clears throat> on the average, no. Well, because, I mean, a lot of people come in and say, I need a transmission service uh, because it's doing this. Or because So at the point you have a problem, a service is not the best thing to do. The best thing is get to a shop like Tri-City Transmission, 
let you experience the problem because that old fluid tells you a story, right? It tells us a story. And if you go ahead and service it, you may make the problem worse versus, hey, we need to go in and do this, then go ahead and do the service. So there's there's different ways to handle these things, but just to go get a service because you think you're starting to have a problem. And I think people in the back of their mind, they, they, they feel a shift that doesn't feel quite right. They're like, oh, man, maybe we should get down there for a service. But generally, no, it doesn't fix anything. And so if you're going to go get a service to fix something, you may be wasting your money. Right, or, or making you cost more because, like I said, that, that's, that's like the DNA. That's the stuff that's left behind. That, that fluid might have chunks in it, or you might be able to look at the filter, or the other shop maybe didn't change the filter, or they took the filter out and threw it away, where you cut them open, you take a look at them, and that really tells you the story. It's kind of like having a little bit of blood work done, if you will. Yeah, we dissect the old filter and see how the transmission's wearing. And you mentioned the flush <clears throat> and not taking the pan off and not changing that filter inspecting it. That's doing a disservice because that filter starts to plug up. It's like your, your air-conditioned filter at home. If you don't change it, the coil freezes up. Mm -hmm. Well, your transmission filter, it's going to, to do debris, and it's going to start to plug up. And when it plugs up, it restricts the pump, and you run on low line pressure, and the transmission fails. So you're just cutting the life of that thing down. Right. And, I, and I, we, we do, at Virginia Auto Service, we do both. We do flush, and we do filter. Sometimes we do them together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, maybe it's every other. So... I mean, the service really needs to be customized to you. That's you're, look, you're looking at it and you're saying, hey, here's what I think is needed. Sometimes you do the pan off and you change the filter, and maybe the next time you don't do that. Maybe you just exchange the fluid. Right. And you don't have to worry about that, but maybe every other may be yeah. the way you do and that. One, and not one service fits all. For example, let's take a Honda, for example. There's a lot of those out there. Some of them now don't have cooler lines. You can't disconnect. And you go to drain that transmission out, and it maybe only holds three or four quarts that you can drain out. So that's that's the right kind of service for that car. A flush maybe isn't. Maybe a flush is a waste of money on that car. So I think that's another thing that's important is when you're at your transmission shop or you're at your bumper-to-bumper -bumper shop or wherever you are, you have that relationship because they're not just going to be hopefully just turning and burning. They're doing the service that's right and appropriate for the conditions that you've presented. When we come back, we've got a couple calls and a few open lines at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, and today the topic is transmissions, but it's also anything you want to talk about in relation to your car. 602-277-9827. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Trust, it's hard to earn and sometimes even even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000 mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20 plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service, they're serious about service. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Today we're talking about transmission service. You can find more information about that if you go to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Our Facebook link is there. You can click on that, and there's some information there. The other place you can find it is at tricitytransmission.com on our bottom right of our homepage. We put, uh, I put a lot of information about the transmission service myths that are out there, and I could probably talk about this for 25 hours and still not cover it all. There's, you, there's a lot to know and a lot you, of transmissions out you there. You wrote a heck of an article here, Dave, I and mean, there's some good information. And I go through and I read this stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I I forgot about that. I mean, there, there's just so much to know. There's such a such a specialty item, for sure. So. Well, we're gonna take a phone call this segment. Who do we got up first, there, Matt? Looks like Shelly in Phoenix on a 1992 Toyota Celica convertible GT. Hey, Shelly, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we do for you? Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. This is the first time I've been on the 
gotten through to a radio show, so I'm all excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing good. Uh, well, I have a unique problem with my car, and I'm hoping you can help me to identify it. I'm not sure if it's transmission-related or what, but I'm going to try to explain this. When uh, it starts up fine, everything's great. It seems to run really well. However, when it shifts from second to third gear or around that time, what will happen is the, the steering wheel will jerk to the right out of nowhere. It just jerks sharply to the right. And if I have my hands on the steering wheel, I, it literally almost pulls me into the other lane. <laughs> but yeah. if I don't have my hands on the steering wheel, it will just kind of do a shift and it will correct itself. And then I'm good to go for the rest of the time. So <laughs> do you have any idea what that could be? Piece of cake, right, Dave? <laughs> I, you got to enlighten me here. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'm thinking it's what you would call torque steer. Maybe you have a bad motor engine mount. Do you have any vibrations or when you shift that car into drive for the first time, like maybe you're backing out of the driveway, you go from reverse to drive and accelerate the first time, do you, do you feel like a thump or something in the floorboard or a, some, some movement? Well, the movement that I do, I do get a lot of movement, actually. When I have the car to stop, I have to put it in neutral because if it's in drive, it shakes pretty yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. If it's in neutral, it's kind of smooth, but then if I put it in drive, it's very Shelly, w- Shelly, what part of town are you in? I'm in South Phoenix. South Phoenix, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you go to bumper to bumper com, you'll find there's a bunch of shops on there. If you don't have a shop to have your car inspected, I think that's pretty easy. And, and, and if you came by my shop it, and just wanted to do a quick check, it's something we're going to go in the parking lot. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to open the hood, get everybody out of the way. <laughs> we don't want you to you know, run anybody over. But it's very easy. You're going to open the hood, and you can an experienced person can look between the crack of the hood and the cowling and see the engine. And you put it in drive, hold your foot on the brake, you're going to step on the gas a little bit, and I bet you're going to see that engine lift up. And what's happened probably is the engine mounts are broken, so that's why the engine's moving and also vibrating a lot. Same thing. We're going to do that in reverse, and maybe it's going to torque upward and mo- have quite a bit of movement. So I think what's happening... It's called torque steer. When you're you're heavy on the gas, it's doing that two three shift. That whole thing is moving, and when you move the transmission, the engine, they're all connected. It changes the load on the axles, and it wants to shift the power. It's just going to make it make it want to change lanes. And, and also, it, it changes the alignment angles too. Also, yeah. so that's why it's going to tug it one way or the other. Yeah. So. A little bit of torque steer. I had no idea where you were going with that. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, sometimes we go too deep and overlook the basics, but it's probably something very relatively simple. Thanks for the call, Shelly. 602-277-5827. we got a couple open lines. We're going to go with John in New River on a 2006 Toyota 4Runner. John, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Uh, good morning, fellow knuckle busters. <laughs> uh, I have a question regarding my 2006 Toyota 4Runner. It's the limited two-wheel drive with the V8. And I bought the car used a couple of years ago with 77,000 miles on it. Cars run perfectly, but when I got it home, uh, I wanted to check the transmission fluid. And uh, I thought I was losing my mind. I couldn't find a dipstick. (laughs) So I did what I should have done in the first place and went to the owner's manual. And there's nothing in there related to maintenance of the transmission. And I now have 105,000 miles on the vehicle, uh, the only time I notice any stumble at all is when it shifts about the same time that the air conditioning compressor kicks in. It has a little stumble to it. But um, what can you recommend as far as changing that transmission fluid? Well, I, I would agree that it does, need to, it does need to be serviced. I know it's not in the manual, and I think Toyota is guilty of that. You know, I see their transmissions fail. The transmission that's in there is a great one. I mean, there's good ones and bad ones out there. So you do want to take care of it. But it should be serviced, and I would that would be one that I would say minimum, you know, service is 50,000 miles on that Toyota transmission. you got a Tundra, Matt, and I don't know what, what it says in your manual. I think mine's 100, but I'm a heavy driver. i got a heavy right foot and, and uh, do a lot of in-town driving. I changed mine at 30. I, just, I didn't do the filter, though. It's a little early. I just did a simple drain and refill, but it's not that simple. Even... I mean, oh, people setting that, the fluid level right and all that stuff. I mean, to keep it simple, I mean, drain out. Let's say you do a drain and refill. Put it in a pan where you can measure how much you took out mm-hmm. and then just put back in the same thing. As long as there's no leaks, the fluid level should be the same. Yeah, but you know what? 
Think about it. How do we add transmission fluid to most transmissions? You're pouring it down the dipstick. Well, that transmission's gone. You ever try standing underneath a car with a bottle of transmission fluid and pouring it in? You can't. It doesn't pour uphill. <laughs> so we, we use mean, all we use all kinds of you know those old metal fire extinguisher cans. We yeah. actually use that. You know, we put the transmission fluid in that, uh, pressure so it up with air, and then oh, well, it's a good little yeah. trick, huh? Well, I mean, we've bought the. I mean, the, you know, how it, most a lot of people don't know this, but the technicians in the shop own their own tools, the basic tools. You got, just to have the tools to fill the transmission, you've got a hundred and fifty dollars worth of adapters and, and and stuff, and you've got to have the right temperature. You need a scan tool that can read the transmission temperature, because full at eighty degrees is different than full at a hundred degrees. It's a different quantity it's, of fluid. It's a moving target, and I think Toyota is guilty with this. And I rem- of this, and it's the marketing thing. And I've seen the commercial where they show a Chevy truck on the right half of the screen and a Toyota truck on the left hand of the screen, left side of the screen, and then they show both their transmission in front of that and in front of the Chevy they stack like 80 bottles of oil <laughs> like Chevy is not a green company yeah in the Toyota transmission which pretty much has the same technology as the GM is only got 10 bottles of fluid stacked in front of it so they look green and like they've got a low cost of ownership same technology why is there so much better why does it because they just well, said it doesn't need service the, the difference is the Chevy takes 12 quarts of six dollar fluid the Toyota takes Eight quarts of seventeen or twenty five dollar fluid. So at the end of the day, it's different. You know, it, it's quite different. So. But it definitely needs to be serviced. So if you got a vehicle out there and you think you've got a sealed transmission, you don't. It needs service and minimum fifty thousand miles. And what should that cost? Well, if it's just a regular kind of vehicle like a, you can spend three hundred bucks. Chev- right? Yeah, Chevrolet, Toyota. You know, two to three hundred bucks is is kind of what you should expect. You may be at the car wash and they may say, hey, we can get that service up for you for seventy nine dollars. But that's a little bit of your Durant's hamburger versus a uh, value menu at uh, one of the one of the fasty places. I bet we're going to get a phone call next, and we'll talk about the different kinds of fluid. How many different fluids do you have on the shelf, Dave? 14 or 16? 32 some? flavors. I like that number, 32 flavors. Remember that ice cream? <laughs> so it's not like it's 32 <laughs> flavors of transmission fluid, and which one belongs in your car? You can't just use any one. we got open lines at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys. Anything you want to talk about, we're here to help. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyons Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurt's. Groovy music, Matt. Hey, man, it's perfect for our Summer of Love promotion at Bumper to Bumper Radio, Dave. Hey, can you dig it? We're going to share the love to help you and your car make it through another sizzling summer with the best service, products, and advice at our Bumper to Bumper Radio approved shops. And we're going to pass that love to Phoenix Children's Hospital. Just donate a buck when you're in for service, and we'll match it for the kids. For the Summer of Love, go to bumper to bumperradiocom today. This is Seth from Phoenix Children's Hospital. Please listen in to the KTAR Giveathon on August 19th and 20th. Go to giveathonforpch.com. Presented by your Valley Hyundai dealers. Hi, I'm Scott, general manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. 
We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Tri-City Transmission. Have you been told you need to spend over $4,000 on a new hybrid battery? Hi, Glenn Hayward here for the Hybrid Shop at Goodworks Auto Repair. If your hybrid has been losing fuel efficiency or become sluggish, the problem may be a battery issue. But replacing the battery with the dealer for four dollars or $5,000 is crazy when the Hybrid Shop at Goodworks Auto Repair can condition your battery to like new for as low as $1,300. Visit goodworksautorepair.com for details. Experience what auto service should be. Golfers, come join us for one last cool getaway this summer with Bunker to Bunker's popular two-person scramble. We're headed to the spectacular Tom Fazio Mountain Course at the award-winning Lodge at Ventania Canyon in Tucson on Saturday, August 22nd. An incredible value, the tournament is just $89, which includes lunch, prizes, big raffle, and a free golf bounce-back coupon. When you help us support Special Olympics, room rates start at just $95 per night. Great location, great value, the perfect way to end summer. Go to BunkerGolf.com for details. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. 115 degrees yesterday. A record heat warning today or extended through the weekend. What do you think that's doing to the battery in your car? I mean, we've been talking about transmissions and transmission fluid today. The number one killer is the heat. You know, when you live back east or the Midwest, it's usually the cold weather. The first freeze is when we see all the cars needing jump starts. It's not like that in Phoenix. Your car, your battery blows up. We've seen them actually blow up from getting too hot. They're, they're sulfating. They're doing all this stuff. So one thing to help prevent that. Go have your battery checked and ask for an interstate battery if you need one. You're, there's two kinds of cars. There's cars that have good batteries and they have one that's going to fail. And you can choose when you replace your battery so you're not stuck on the side of the road with the roadside service guy trying to sell you a cut-rate battery. You can find an interstate battery at interstatebatteries.com or any of the bumper-to-bumper radio shops at bumper to bumper radio.com so check them out well you know talking to billy khan from interstate battery he said like for for years he would chart it out how many batteries were sold versus the temperature i mean it's it's right there gets hot batteries you know batteries die if your battery's two two and a half three years old you know you got one on the horizon you can go ahead and just replace it or you can wait until it tells you when it wants to be replaced. Yeah, wait till you're late for the wedding or picking up the kids from soccer. Oh, you're, in the, you're, you're headed to a graduation. Click, you, click. You know nothing. how much it is to leave the kids at daycare per minute past the, th- the cutoff point? Holy smokes, almost as much as a battery. Just get you it sound, out of the way. You sound very experienced in this. <laughs> it's happened a few times. <laughs> for so. sure. Well, let's go to with Gene in Phoenix on a 2004 Lexus IS300. Hey, Gene, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? I don't know, Dave. Did I, I push the right button? I think we got way. Charlie and Casa Grand. Gene, we're going to get you next. I wasn't uh, hey. loading that the right way. What can we help you with on your Ford Freestyle? Well, we have a 2007 Ford Freestyle with the CV transmission. And as I understand it, if they quit working or they go out, you can't get them repaired and or rebuilt. Is that true? It's kind of like a sealed transmission, a little unicornish, Dave. You know, I mean, they, they there, there's not a lot of people that are, that are rebuilding them actively. There's not a lot of parts in a CVT transmission. It's a couple of cones and a chain, and then we just vary, you know, we just vary where the chain rides on the cones. So a free star that is one that can be rebuilt. So there's guys out there rebuilding them. They can be rebuilt, but they should be serviced because they're expensive, and you don't if you don't rebuild it, you got to buy a new one. And that is one of the transmissions you can buy new because they're, they're so non-rebuildable. So I would say <clears throat> you don't want to – CVT technology is newer to the industry. I mean, it's been around for 100 years, but really Nissan was the first one to heavily, heavily push it in the Murano. 
all their centrists come with a CVT transmission in it. And they're weird to drive too. But is this, the CVT for sure is a special fluid. I mean, that is CVT. Oh, yeah. That's not to be confused with. Some of the other ones can cross over and you're okay, but that's CVT. But are they failing from fluid related? service you know problems or there's is there something else that, i mean we see them in jeeps there was that patriot or something gosh tons of them nissans what i think by design they i mean they they work good on light vehicles like mm-hmm. snowmobiles that's where they were used for years but uh I, I think just by design they don't last as long as a traditional transmission so i'm not a big fan because here you got a car with a hundred thousand miles you need a transmission and then a hundred thousand miles later you need another transmission i don't and it hasn't been successful for some of these auto manufacturers so i steer away from them i'm, I'm just not a fan yeah and i think they were for improved fuel economy you don't really feel them shift so well and i bet we're going to see a transition away from them would be my yeah, it's probably too soon to tell. They are definitely more efficient than the rest, but they should be serviced. And one of the things I haven't put on my website yet, but at tricitytransmission.com, I spell out all that stuff, but I'm going to put the technical information. You can literally see the difference in the additive package for a CVT versus for a traditional transmission. Cool. All right, we're going to get Gene. I'm going to push the right button this time. Gene in Phoenix has a 2004 Lexus. Gene, how can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, yeah, I had a question about the <clears throat> front end alignment on the the car. Uh, the dealership was recommending every twelve thousand miles I have the front end aligned because they said it had some like racing uh, su- steering or suspension there mm-hmm. on the front of there. But I mean, at one hundred and sixty dollars a pop, you know, I'm just like, you know, <laughs> you, ever heard, is there any... you ever heard the term blowing smoke? Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I, I used to take my old muscle car to Jack. Jack's wheel alignment over there in Glendale, and uh-huh. I swore by that. Every time I put a new set of tires on there, I would take the car there, you uh-huh. know, and have them line it up and make sure everything was good. I, I tell you, you, I'll tell you what, Gene. I've been seeing more and more of these car car dealerships, and I don't know what it is, but there, I must be se- missing something. There must be a ton of money in alignments or tires or something because they've got all this stuff where you just you're in the service bay and you have you drive your car in. Up, oh, need an alignment. You know, it's supposedly calculating. You know the probability that you'll need an alignment, and, and there's a couple of things that, to me, that dictate when you need an alignment. One is there a symptom? You don't necessarily do alignments as preventative maintenance, contrary to like a fuel injection clean service. If you have a symptom there, you've waited too long. So is your car pulling? Is it going to the left? Is it going to the right? Is it not returning back to center? Is there a vibration? Or something like that. Uneven tire wear. Well, that and that was the second one. The, the uneven the tires, much like we talked earlier about the transmission fluid, it tells you a story. If we look at your tires and they're wearing evenly, and we're we're uh, you know they have smooth tread across, and there's no cupping or anything like that. Well, maybe we don't need to do an alignment. We always suggest it when you get new tires to protect that investment. But the notion that you need an alignment every twelve thousand miles, someone's trying. <laughs> I can't think of anything other than someone's trying to stack the service department full of alignments for some reason, and especially at 160 bucks. Now, I know they can be expensive. I mean, a BMW alignment, you're supposed to have a half tank of gas, 80 pounds in the front speed, 70 pounds in the passenger seat, 50 pounds of weight. I mean, it's a workout. We've got a Gold's Gym workout just to uh, properly weight the car to do an alignment on some cars. So I, I, I think you drive it till you have a symptom. You keep an eye on what your tires look like, or you align it every time you get a set of tires, and you'll be good. And I don't care if that's your Lexus, your Chevy, your BMW, your Toyota, or whatever the other kind of jalopy that you might be driving. <laughs> hey, thanks for the call, Gene. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Hans in Peoria on a 2012 Honda Odyssey Touring Edition. How can we help you today, Hans? Yeah, hi guys. Um, yeah, I, you know my Honda Odyssey. When it comes to the transmission, it uh, it has a lot of shuddering, and so when you go from like first, second gear, it feels like it's going to launch forward into that next gear. There's like that delay in that. How many miles are on your Odyssey? I've got forty thousand. Fairly new. Have you ever drove a Honda before? Or is this your first Honda? I've had an 05 Honda Odyssey before. Okay. I don't, I mean, it's so, it's it's fairly young. So, I mean, without driving, it would be hard for me to to say, hey, here's what's what's going on with it. But it's, so how would you describe it again? So it makes the shift from first gear to second gear. Is it seem yeah. like it's, it, it jumps forward? Yeah. So like, so if I'm driving and you kind of go around the, around the corner, 
and it just kind of sh- it goes down to his lower gear. So as you go around the corner and take off again, it feels like it's just going to shake out of the out of the car. It's got a lot of shuddering. It's still in the pedal, um, and it just has really doesn't have that smooth transition from gear to gear. Yeah, there's has, if if you're describing it like that, it feels like there's definitely something wrong with that thing. You need to get in, get in the shop and get that checked out. Okay, because I know it should be under warranty. I think they. You know, the internet, when you look things up, can be your worst enemy. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. You, you uh, can be a car hypochondriac after that, for sure. Yeah, and then you start seeing, like, oh, people are like, oh, yeah, they know about a problem. The engineers are trying to work on this. And uh, so, but uh, I, I think they told me at the dealership that it's, you know, still warranted up to, like, 75000 I think is what they said. So. Yeah, there's, I mean, there, there is warranty on that for sure, but it is something you want to have checked out and, and, and throw the service rider in the car with you. Go take it for a drive. Sometimes I think of cars when you go around corners and all of a sudden there's a transmission symptom. Sometimes they're low on fluid because if you think of that fluid in the bottom of that transmission, like a fish tank, if you turn a corner with a fish tank, it's all going to slosh to one side. And a lot of times transmissions will take a gulp of air if the fluid is low. And then it will chatter and do some really weird things. So it could be something just as simple as the thing is half a quarter of a quart low on fluid. And Hondas are hard to set the fluid level on. Yeah, Hans, you know, another thing uh, that you should do, and this goes for everybody, whenever you have a, a problem that you suspect might be under warranty or is under warranty, Make sure that when you go in that that is documented on your work order. Sometimes you might just go in for an oil change or some other kind of service and say, oh, you know, I'm, not ha- I'm having this problem. The service advisor makes a note about it or maybe doesn't make a note about it. They do the oil change. They say, oh, never, oh, there was nothing wrong. And then lo and behold, <laughs> you get out of warranty and there's a problem. So always when you go to the shop, especially in a warranty condition, make sure you get an invoice or that it's memorialized that they that you did complain about an issue and that they did attempt to duplicate and there isn't a problem. And if you've done that a couple of times and then all of a sudden you get out of warranty and, and lo and behold they found the problem, you're going to have a better chance of getting some help. Yeah, so. for sure, for sure. Well, let's go with uh, Gary in Sun City on a 2001 Lexus. Man, it seems like Toyota today, Lexuses and Toyotas. What can we help you with, Gary? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, yes, thank you for taking my call. I'm calling not that I have an issue at the moment, but I had one that was so unusual. I thought it might be worth telling you about. In my 2001 Lexus, <clears throat> it started out by getting a VSC light along with the engine light. No one can seem to find it. Tried several things. Finally, the reading says that I had two knock sensors and an oxygen sensor, et cetera, et cetera. We ended up replacing those. Still had the problem. They checked it and checked it and kept getting the readings. The transmission would not shift out of second gear. Then it wouldn't shift down. It just went on and on. And I could hear this arcing underneath the dash. And they said, well, we think we need to do this. I said, wait a minute. The arcing comes on first and then the lights. And this old timer who's been working on Lexus always said, oh, you know, those early Lexus, and they thinks Toyota. There's a ground wire, the main ground that comes through the firewall, is bolted on, and goes to all electronic components. This thing was corroded, something serious. They cleaned it, put it on. It's been running just like brand new ever since. Yeah, Unbelievable. Dave, how many, I mean, we talk a lot, Dave, obviously, and and, and thanks for the info, Gary, and the, the experience. But, Dave, I know I've talked to you a lot, and you're always like, oh, my God, I had this, you know, these people, they called, they had their car at the Toyota dealership or the whatever, and they're trying to replace the transmission. Something doesn't sound right. They tow it over. You spend a few hundred bucks tracing things down and find a bad connection. I mean, it, the, these transmissions, just because you have a symptom of a transmission, remember, there's the mechanical of the transmission, and then there's a computer telling that transmission what to do. It's got to get good instructions. These cars have so much electronics on them that one bad connection like that, a main ground. How many times are we looking for bad grounds whenever we have a problem? Those grounds cause issues. And... Transmission, everyone comes in, they think they got the, oh, man, I'm going to need a transmission. It's going to be the worst. They call and say, what's the worst case? Well, the worst case, you buy a transmission you don't need. That's the worst case. But let's figure out what's wrong because more times than not, it's not, it's, hey, it was a quart low on fluid. We had to add some fluid or it was a bad connection, those type of things. That brings us to our tip of the week, and this is from Pascal. And a lot of people don't think to do this, but when it's baking hot out, it's 115 degrees, roll your windows down just a little bit. 
so that you can let some of that hot air because, you know, ultraviolet light gets in, it bakes on the inside, now it can't get back out of the car, and it's bad for the interior of your car. It's going to crack your dashboard. It's going to crack the chrome on your door handle. It's going to break things, and not only that, when you get in the car, it's going to be 25 minutes by the time the car <laughs> cools down, and you're already there, and you've already got a shirt yeah. that's wet with sweat. I like to crack my sunroof, you know, just tip it up. It's going to vent right out. And the other thing, put a window screen on. Let's keep those that sun from baking in. Let's reflect some of that out. It might just be the marginal difference of being comfortable or not comfortable for a few minutes. When we come back, we're taking a few more calls and maybe take a look at your text. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun, and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are Bumper to Bumper Radio. You can find us at bumper to bumper radio.com. What you also find there is a list of auto shops that Matt and I believe in. And they're places that we would send our family members. or any, We have no problem sending people to these shops because they're great shops. Sometimes we, I would prefer my friends and family members go somewhere else. <laughs> it's a lot easier to deal with. <laughs> right. Yeah, When because you, you don't know. Do I charge you? Don't I charge you? You're a friend of mine. How do I handle that? So just refer them to a friend. But uh, these are great shops. You can find them at bumper to bumper radiocom With the KTR Giveathon coming up this Thursday, Bumper to Bumper has been doing something at all the shops, and that's collecting a buck. And all the money that we collect at the counter, we are going to match for the KTR Giveathon. And and I'm and I'm assuming that and then some. You know, this is a pretty neat deal. Uh, you know, usually the radiothon isn't isn't until September, so it's a little bit earlier this year. Maybe catching some of you guys off guard. And all day long on Thursday, KTR will be broadcasting from PCH and raising money and in all the bumper to bumper shops. So you've got three more days to stop by a shop. Pascal's sitting in the studio today from from my shop. We had a lady just walk in the other day. She was on her – she work, works in the neighborhood. She and her coworker were just out walking, doing their little exercise, stopped in, dropped 10 bucks in the can. And that's what it's about, giving back to the community. So thank you for doing that. We got some phone calls, but I want to get to this text because I think it's timely. I have a 2009 Toyota – can, uh, Toyota Corolla with 80,000 miles on it. It has an automatic transmission. The check engine light came on the other day, so I took it to my mechanic. They said it was a pressure solenoid. I service the vehicle on a regular intervals. It drives fine. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, absolutely. This car has a transmission problem before its first scheduled service from Toyota that's not even the manual. How can that be? <laughs> right, huh? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just defies logic when they say these things don't need service. So, like a unicorn, a sealed transmission is not there. A solenoid problem is not an uncommon problem for an automobile. The transmission is controlled by a computer, and it does it via shift solenoids. And there's a pressure control solenoid in there as well. And the computer is constantly checking uh, those solenoids, and it sends out voltage to them, and, hey, we got the response we wanted. So it's very very possibly could be a bad solenoid. Well, but also, I mean, that solenoid is an electronic part. Sometimes those fail because the... You know, any any electronic motor will turn magnetic and, and, and start attracting the metal and the stuff that it, it grabs it onto that solenoid before it can go get caught in the filter. So you could have it fail that way, or you can just have. I mean, it's like a light bulb. Sometimes they just burn out. So you know, don't get mad at your at your mechanic or your transmission shop thinking, "Gosh, I service thing every thirty thousand miles," like you said. And why is this happen? You can service it every day and still maybe and still have a solenoid go out. It's not an uncommon repair to do a solenoid. We do them all the time. But this is one thing: if you're, you know, buyer beware. A lot of times you're. You could be at a transmission shop, and they're telling you you need a transmission. It's so bad, and we got to take care of it. And all you need is a solenoid. So that's why people call. They say, how much for a transmission? You know, I don't know. Do you really need one? So, I mean, be aware of that, that there's a lot of things. There's transmission problems, and there's transmission control problems. And this solenoid could be a transmission problem. There's solenoid errors, and then there's solenoid performance errors, two different things. So a little, little thing they'll have to dig into to get you the right answer. Yeah. Hey, I want to take one more text before we go to the phones. And somebody says, should I put high-end shocks on my minivan for camping occasionally or off-road? Is the cost worth it? And, and I hear a couple things there. The shocks aren't going to gain you any ground clearance or anything like that. You said occasionally. So I'm going to prepare that car for what I'm using it the majority of the time for. You might go, when you say high end, I think you mean heavy duty. And maybe you could get something heavy duty on the rear where you're putting extra load with luggage and camping gear or something like that. But you don't maybe you want to make sure you're not compromising your ride quality Monday through Friday. Mm, grocery uh, getter ride you know, quality. Grocery getter. And, and and quite honestly, if you're off roading in a minivan, you, you know I don't know how much off <laughs> you're going down the dirt road. I mean, some people call that off roading, and I'm I'm not trying to pick at anything, but I'm just saying. Also, don't get a false sense of security. Hey, I put these I put heavy duty shocks on my van so I can, you know, go over you know rougher terrain or whatever. And, and chances are there may not even necessarily be a quote heavy duty <laughs> option. You just want a good quality. I don't know what kind of minivan KYB or Monroe or the brands I like. Well, we got so. four phone calls in in just a few seconds, so we're gonna have to go with. Uh, looks like Jerry in Tempe on a 2010 Hyundai Elantra. How can we help you, Jerry? All right. I want to thank you for taking my call. Uh, I have a 2010 Hyundai Elantra, and uh, believe it or not, I have 263,000 miles on it. I wow. drive for a living. I live in the car. Uh, I'm one step against uh, away from all my ex-wives. Not really. but uh, Is that a one-bedroom or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a one-bedroom. No, but it's, it's good. Uh now, I've uh, just had my motor uh, for my air conditioning replaced. It was the original one. And this thing is like a deep freeze in here. But anyway, my mechanic said that, see, he won't touch the transmission. The transmission hasn't had a problem. Uh, I uh, And he said because it, it's so much mileage, if they try to flush it or do anything, it could cause a... Uh, a problem and they're not going to guarantee it and i went to two other places and they did the same thing now my last car i had i had a pt cruiser i ended up with two hundred ninety-five thousand. wow and and which was unheard of for a chrysler um uh right for, the, for that type of right. thing but this well, car is i haven't had any major major work done on it I've had three tiny valves replaced. Wow, good. Well, I'll tell you a couple things. You're in good luck because you live in Tempe, and that's where Dave's shop is, Tri-City Transmission, right there? I, I, I think I went there, and he said they wouldn't they wouldn't, guarantee, they wouldn't do a flush or they wouldn't 
and I'm not having any problem well, not going on wood. Right. Well, what I was going to say, good news is you're there. It. It. I. I I think you're going to get a better answer than that. I mean, that may be true. They may have found some symptom, but to make that statement with a broad stroke like that is, is not true. We we hear that from some fleet companies. Oh, we don't want to service them. That's kind of the old 70s mentality. You used to put in new fluid. It's got detergents in it, stronger detergents, and it washes all the stuff away that's holding it together. But I know if you go by Tri-City Transmission, they'll be able to test drive that car, take a look at the fluid. And and maybe maybe it doesn't need to be serviced. Those aren't well, that I, expensive a transmission, are they? Dave? I, I picked the lesser of two evils. So we got oil that's completely worn out after two hundred sixty three thousand miles. How much longer do you think that transmission is going to last with bad oil? So it's still worth it to go ahead and change the fluid. And and we may not go flush it out. We may just do a drain and fill. See how that goes. Bring it back. Do a drain and fill again on it. And so it's a custom transmission service, like you said. But we always drive them before, and if there's no issues, it's worth the service. If there is an issue, we won't touch it, and we'll say keep keep running it till it blows. And you know, you're already living good. You got 263,000 miles out of it. This thing. Yeah. So start preparing. If yeah. So it, it's got to get good information. You've got to have that con- conversation with the shop. So. It's the summer of love. Don't forget to support PCH. It's like the summer of sweat your butt off today because, good <laughs> Lord, is it hot out there. It's miserable. So take care of your car this weekend. Drive safe. Stay cool. And we will see you next weekend at 11 right here on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Are these the dog days of summer or what? You know that time of the year when you're counting down the final days on the calendar and debating whether you should do one more cool golf getaway weekend? Well, no worries. At Bunker to Bunker, we're celebrating with one last hurrah. On Saturday, August 22nd, our popular Bunkerville two-man scramble tournament is heading to the world-renowned Tom Fazio Mountain Course at the award-winning Lodge at Ventania Canyon in Tucson, nestled in the cool confines of the foothills of the spectacular Santa Catalina Mountains. The Lodge at Ventania Canyon is the perfect cool and quick getaway. Once again, we have created a great value. The tournament is just $89, which includes lunch, prizes, big raffle, and a free bounce back golf coupon when you help us support Special Olympics. And our special bunker room rates start at just $95 a night. Great location, great value, and a really fun golf weekend with your golf buddies or golf hunting to end your summer. Space is limited. Sign up today at BunkerGolf.com. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at TriCityTransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Tri-City Transmission. Groovy music, Matt. Hey, man. It's perfect for our Summer of Love promotion at Bumper to Bumper Radio, Dave. Hey, can you dig it? We're going to share the love to help you and your car make it through another sizzling summer with the best service, products, and advice at our Bumper to Bumper Radio approved shops. And we're going to pass that love to Phoenix Children's Hospital. Just donate a buck when you're in for service and we'll...